Hello and welcome. I am That British Guy and today I'm going to be bringing you my Money in the Bank 2017 predictions. Now I am recording this on June the 9th um, and that is because I'm actually away next week so I won't be able to record this after the go home show for Smackdown Live before Money in the Bank. So obviously there might be some changes to the card on that show um, but if I don't record it today I won't get a chance to record it all, edit it and upload it before I go away. So bear that in mind. Um, at the moment the card is only the five matches. We've got all three title matches. Uh, the women's title match, tag title match and the WWE title match. And we've got the two Money in the Bank ladder matches, the men's one and the women's one. So at the moment, with only a five match card, it's likely they're going to add something to it. Obviously there will be a pre-show match, um, but I think they might add something else to the mix as well. Hopefully something for um, Tyler Breeze and Fandango, since they've been featured very heavily on um, recent episodes of Smackdown Live. So... What I have also put in, um, and I will do these first just to get them out of the way, is I think there will probably be a Breezango match, um, either against the Ascension or against the Colognes again, and hopefully uh, Breezango win that one because they've been on a bit of a roll um, of late and I think they deserve the win. Whether that's the pre-show match or not, I hope not because I think it should be on the main card. Um, and in addition to that, I think it's likely that... We might see um, Aiden English lose to either Luke Harper, Mojo Rawley or Ty Dillinger. Um, whatever on earth happened to Ty Dillinger, I don't know. Um, or we might even see um, Eric Rowan beating Sin Cara, um, potentially. Um, there's not really going to be much build to either of those matches. There might be one quick segment. Um, on the go home show which then leads to a match in on the pre-show um, but those out the way um, let's move on to the matches that we actually know about and let's move on to the women's title match between Naomi and Lana bit of a strange one this one because Lana's not really done a lot to deserve this title match it's nice that she's featuring on Smackdown Live um, and I can understand why they wouldn't be um, too willing to put her in the Money in the Bank ladder match um, seeing as obviously they've, they've got sort of something between the other five women at the moment um, that goes all the way back to the superstar shake-up with the um, introduction of Tamina and Charlotte and the whole welcoming committee angle so I can understand why they want to keep Lana out of the way of that but the end of the day all she's done is distracted Naomi and caused her to lose a match against Tamina bit of a sort of stupid babyface tactics of oh I need my revenge so I'll put my title on the line which is obviously playing completely into what Lana wants um I can't see Lana winning though um on her maybe she'll get a strong showing against B Becky Lynch or Charlotte um on the go home show just to give her a bit of momentum going in but I can't see uh, Naomi dropping the belt uh, at this stage so I'm going for a Naomi win there. Moving on now to the women's money in the bank ladder match. So we've got Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Natalia, Tamina and Carmella. Now on my recent booking video I actually put Asuka to win this and I really really hope they do this. I think it would be brilliant just having her as a surprise entrance so that there's six women and six men um, I can't think of anyone more deserving to come up from NXT she's still undefeated um, if it were me I'd still go with that but I don't think that they're going to be bringing her up anytime soon certainly not before um, SummerSlam and TakeOver Brooklyn 3 so we'll sort of park that one to the side and we'll leave that for the fantasy booking video um, so with the five women that are left, I originally picked Natalia. And that's purely because um, Money in the Bank ladder matches and the cash-in of the briefcase, I think, work a lot better when it is a heel. Um, just because of the nature of the cash-in, it's a, sort of a sneak move, catching an opponent while they're at their weakest. 
Um, I don't think that works particularly well with baby faces. So with the three women that we've got there that are heels at the moment, WWE seem to have put more stock in Natalia, certainly recently anyway. Um, so I went for her. However, looking back across SmackDown since the brand split, they seem to have pegged a lot on Becky Lynch, and rightly so, really. She was the first champion that they had. She was in um, the Steel Cage main event, and I think really helped boost Alexa Bliss in the eyes of the crowd. It gave Alexa Bliss a really strong baby face to play off of, and that has really elevated Alexa Bliss in the eyes of the fans. She got her reward of moving over to the flagship show on Raw and became champion there very quickly. And I don't think Becky Lynch gets a lot of the praise for that. So I think this might be a good opportunity for them to sort of give her a pat on the back and say, well done for what you've done um, in, in the last sort of just under a year. Uh, on the SmackDown brand, and I can see this then playing into a Becky Lynch heel turn, which I think she kind of needs. Her, her character's getting a bit stale, and it could do with a, a bit of a, a bit of a change. And they, I know they teased it a bit with the welcoming committee, um, but I think either the winning this will lead to a heel turn, or the cash in itself can then lead to a heel turn. Or maybe she even just turns heel beforehand after the match and then because she's then a heel cashing in, um, I think that will be very good for her. It also will give a babyface victory um, on the card um, along with Naomi because for the rest of the card, um, I think we might see something similar to Extreme Rules where it's uh, heels rule the day. So for this one, I'm going for Becky Lynch as a face but I think she will turn heel at some point and then as a heel cash in the briefcase probably still on Naomi um maybe even as early as SummerSlam who knows moving on to the tag title match between the Usos and the New Day um it's great to see the New Day back um a little bit of a, a gap absence really does make the heart grow fonder because they were really getting stale on Raw and really not doing anything um, so seeing them over on SmackDown straight into the title picture as they deserve, brilliant. I will still be going for an Usos victory though because I want to see this extend a little bit longer. So I think if the Usos are able to steal a victory or maybe even get themselves disqualified and keep hold of the titles, that can then keep this going a bit longer um, and then the New Day can win in... A couple of months time maybe um, and just keep that program then going with with the Usos trying to get the title back um, so I'm going for the Usos at the moment but I think New Day will probably be the next Smackdown tag champions next we have the men's money in the bank ladder match we've got Kevin Owens AJ Styles Sami Zayn Baron Corbin Shinsuke Nakamura and Dolph Ziggler. Bearing in mind what I said during the women's one, I think this will be, again, a heel winning this. So that leaves us with Kevin Owens, Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin. Now, I see after this match, they're sort of teasing a Shinsuke Nakamura-Kevin Owens feud, probably for the US title, and they will probably end up giving the title to Shinsuke Nakamura. Um... Again, probably by sort of maybe SummerSlam, if they face each other at the next pay per view and Owen steals a victory and then they keep that going to SummerSlam and crown Shinsuke at SummerSlam. It just seems like a nice, nicer stage for that. Um, so I, I think that's going that way. So that rules out Kevin Owens. And I don't think Dolph Ziggler at this point in his career is really destined for world title shots anymore unfortunately i think that ship has probably sailed um and now would be a really nice time after this match for him to maybe go into a program with someone like ty dillinger um and try and elevate him because obviously dolph ziggler is is more sort of the veteran on the uh, the roster at the moment and i think it's really rather than elevating him so much it's now more his job to elevate the younger new superstars like Ty Dillinger 
Um, so, or even Mojo Rawley or someone like that. Um, I think that is really going to be his calling after this. So I'm not thinking it's Ziggler. So that leaves us with Baron Corbin. And there have been quite a few rumours that this is going to be his year. And he is going to sort of sidestep the US title completely. Um, that's probably why they didn't bother with the Intercontinental title with him at WrestleMania. Which... To be honest, I thought at the time was a bit of a shame, but in hindsight, seeing the superstar shake-up and what's happened there, um, it might actually be a blessing in disguise for him because I think he's stronger on SmackDown. There's less um, less competition, if you like, in terms of main event um, heels for him to sort of get lost in the shuffle with. So I think this could really be a brilliant opportunity for him um to win this briefcase he could certainly use it um to to get him to that next level and as soon as a baby face wins that title i can see him cashing in immediately um on someone like aj styles or even Sami Zayn. maybe you never know it's smackdown is the land of opportunity maybe it's Sami Zayn's time to to win that belt from Jinder Mahal at some point or down the line um, and I can really see Baron Corbin then just laying waste at the top of the card with a title I think that would be really good for him so I'm, I'm going Baron Corbin for the for the win here in the ladder match and finally the main event we have the WWE title match between Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton now a bit late to the uh, the debate here, the whole gender thing. Um, I don't really have a problem with him having the title. I can see why they've done it from a business point of view. Um, he has been in the industry a long time and hasn't really been given any opportunities before to really show what he can do. Um, his sort of two notable things were 3MB, which was awful, and the whole thing with um, the great Carly when he first came in and the whole being I think he was his brother-in-law and was blackmailing him if I remember rightly and yeah those two angles didn't really do a lot for him um, so it's not really so much that he's got the title that I was bothered with it was more the, the very quick build to it I think it would have been better and probably would have created more buzz if they'd have just built him up a little bit more maybe a few more pay-per-view victories against people like Kevin Owens or Dolph Ziggler maybe although they're heels so probably more like Sami Zayn or dare I say even AJ Styles just to elevate him and show that he's actually on that level whereas it was a we've got a multi-man match oh Jinder Mahal's in there nobody seriously thought that he was going to win it and then out of nowhere he, he managed to pin I think it was Sami Zayn um and everyone was kind of taken aback by it so it was it was that naught to a hundred um build really that that was the problem for me having said that I don't think he's dropping the title anytime soon. Um, if they are wanting to go with the gender experiment, I think it's going to have to take um, a few months to really get into effect. Um, his popularity has skyrocketed in India, so I don't see how taking the belt off of him would really do their business plans any favours over there if they're trying to tap into the third biggest market in the world. Um, he will probably hold that title definitely, I think, until SummerSlam, possibly even until Survivor Series. Um, who knows? They might take it off of him on Survivor Series and then have him win the Royal Rumble. You you never really know what what's going through their heads. So at the moment, I definitely think Jinder Mahal is holding on to the title. Um, I think then Randy Orton needs to make way and likewise elevate somebody very much in doing what um i said about Dolph Ziggler elevating um a sort of mid card heel um and then Jinder can move on to someone like Sami Zayn or AJ Styles or 
hopefully not Shinsuke Nakamura because I think he still needs protecting um, in the eyes of the the general fan base. Um, but I yeah, that's what I see for Jinder Mahal going forward. So I'm going for a victory for him at Money in the Bank. And they have been my predictions. What do you think? Do you agree, disagree with uh, any that I've put forward there? Um, my Extreme Rules ones weren't too bad, apart from the uh, the, the last two matches. Um, so, never know. Hopefully, uh, I've done a bit better with these ones. Um, please give a thumbs up to the video if you like it. Um, subscribe to the channel if you, you like what you're seeing so far. Um, I will see you soon. I have been that British guy. Goodbye.